Welcome to News at 10. I'm Brendan Lepaul. Over 10,000 police officers and personnel involved in the upcoming state elections in Malacca and Strawa will be given priority to receive the COVID-19 booster shot vaccine. Deputy Inspector General of Police Dr. Sri Maslan Lazim said PDRM has already applied to the Health Ministry to administer the booster jab. Kita telah buat permohonan pada 26 Oktober yang lepas lah, eh? 26 Oktober yang lepas dan kita akan bagi keutamaan lah kepada kontijen yang anda ada PRN ni kan eh? macam Melaka, Sarawak kan yang ada PRN ni untuk mereka ni bertugas di bawah lah sebab kita berharap sangat lah dengan dos pengalak ni yang ketiga ni dapat mantu lah eh? untuk mencegah daripada Covid tersebut eh? Speaking during an official booking visit to the Kelantan Police Headquarters in Kota Baru, the Deputy IGP said so far about 7,000 personnel have been stationed in Srawa, while about 3,600 others in Malacca to ensure smooth elections processes in both states. The Health Ministry logged 4,979 new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. This is the second time daily infections dipped below the 5,000 mark this month. The latest numbers represented a decrease of 875 cases compared to the new infections recorded yesterday. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said this brings the total number of COVID-19 cases in the country since the start of the pandemic to 2,471,642. According to the COVID Now website, Malaysia previously recorded 4,782 cases on 25th October. The Health DG added that the most of the new infections, or 98.3% of the new cases reported today, were those in categories 1 and 2, in which patients only display mild symptoms or none at all. He also said that a total of 6,127 new recoveries were reported in the last 24 hours, thus exceeding the number of new cases. Apart from that, a total of 562 patients are still being treated in the intensive care units, with 326 requiring respiratory assistance. In addition, Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham said six new clusters have been identified, with two each involving a higher educational institution and community, and one each involving other educational institution and workplace. A local couple was among seven people arrested for alleged involvement in a drug trafficking syndicate following raids on four houses in Johor Bahru from the 21st to 28th October. Bukirama Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department Director Dato Raza Rudin Hussein said police also seized drugs worth 4.2 million ringgit, which comprised 115.1 kilogram of shabu, ketamine, ecstasy, mushrooms, aramin 5 and yaba pills. He said the couple was nabbed along with three local men, two women, including a Chinese national aged 39 to 48. According to Dato Raza Rudin, the husband and wife were believed to be the mastermind of the syndicate, which has been active in smuggling and distributing drugs since media, and are believed to be smuggling in from neighboring countries through the northern peninsula to be distributed to local and international markets. Kita telah pun melucutkan harta iaitu berupa kenderaan, lima buah kenderaan, ada sebelas akaun yang kita sis, mata wang, wang tunai Malaysia, barang emas berjumlah lebih kurang 689,601 ringgit. Dato Raza Rudin said six of the suspects, including the married couple, tested positive for amphetamine and methamphetamine, while five of them had drug-related criminal records. All the individuals have been remanded from the 22nd of October until tomorrow under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Raya Tudin Al Mustafa Bila Shah and Raja Pumaisri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimunah Iskandaria have expressed condolences to the family of Sarawak Deputy Chief Minister Tan Sri Dr James Jabut Masing who died today at the age of 72. 
the Majesty's expressed sadness over the demise of Tan Sri Dr. Ma Singh, who was also Bharti Rakyat Strawa, PRS president, and hoped that his family would be patient and resilient during this difficult time. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Dr. Sri Masar Biyakov has expressed condolences over the passing of the Strawa Deputy Chief Minister. In a statement, the Prime Minister said that on behalf of the government and all Malaysians, he also hoped that Tan Sri Masing's family would be given the strength and patience to face this bereavement. He said the demise of Tan Sri Masing was a great loss to Strawa and the country. Tan Sri Masing, who was Bali State Assemblyman, died at the Norba Srawa Medical Center, NSMC, in Petra Jaya, Kuching, at 7.05 a.m. He was admitted to the intensive care unit at the Srawa General Hospital in September after he tested positive for COVID-19 and was later transferred to NSMC for further treatment. A motorcyclist and a pedestrian died while two others suffered serious injuries after a road accident at Miran Rajawali in Bayan Lepas, Pulau Pinang last night. The motorcyclist, a 33-year-old man and a pedestrian, a 45-year-old woman, died at the scene while a car driver and another pedestrian sustained serious injuries. Bayan Baru Fine Rescue Department Operations Officer Hilmi Rizal Morad said the department received a call about the incident at 11.26 p.m. According to him, personnel from the department arrived at the scene to find that passers-by had already removed the driver from his car. He added that the driver and the pedestrian who sustained serious injuries were sent to the Pulau Pinang Hospital, while the motorcyclist and the other pedestrian were declared dead at the scene by paramedics. Uh, kemalangan uh, berlaku dipercayai uh, sebuah motosikal yang terbabas uh, di tengah jalan. Makanya dua orang wanita, itu orang awam, uh, cuba menolong uh, lelaki yang terbabas tersebut. Dalam pada yang sama, sebuah kereta yang datang dengan laju dan uh, melanggar ketiga-tiga mangsa tersebut. Dan uh, menyebabkan uh, dua Yang meninggal dunia. Welcome back. The Communications and Multimedia Ministry has identified three aspects of the broadband ecosystem that must be focused on to ensure the quality of internet access. Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said the infrastructure must be adequate to ensure the level of access to broadband service for the community in all areas, including rural locations. He said infrastructure was an important aspect as the speed of at least 35 megabits per second Mbps is required to connect to a 4G network. Baru complete ecosystem perkhidmatan jalur lebar negara dengan prasarana berkualiti, perkhidmatan 4G dan 5G yang mula kita perkenalkan dalam negara kita, kemudian mempunyai apa tu peranti-peranti yang sesuai dan dimampui oleh semua rakyat termasuk golongan paling miskin sekalipun. Kemudian yang lebih penting lagi ni adalah aplikasinya. Ha, jadi saya ambil ini sebagai satu wholesome approach, satu pendekatan yang menyeluruh. The minister said this to reporters after handing over the Huawei MatePad T10 tablets to form six students at Dewan Kacang Putra Chengal, Ketereh, Kelantan today. He also revealed that the ministry also plans to provide 1,000 Malaysian family digital economy centres throughout the country by the end of next year. Meanwhile, Tan Sri Anwar warned telecommunication companies that they will be fine if failed to provide the services as promised to consumers. He said the laws under the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, required each telco to implement the minimum standards that had been set. Provision itu sudah ada. Cuma tinggal lagi sekarang penguat kuasaannya. Jadi sekarang saya ingin melihat uh, SKMM proactive uh, to always to go on the ground, be responsive to the uh, complaints, uh, yeah, complaint that they receive, so that those complaints must be attended to. Janganlah ada rakyat mengadu 
biar begitu saja. Kadang-kadang aduan datang dalam bentuk uh, viral di social media pun kita ambil tindakan. Elaborating further, Tan Sri Anwar said his ministry had also created the National Digital Network Jandela Map Portal as a platform for the people to lodge complaints regarding coverage, broadband speed and so on. He added that his ministry took a serious view of the matter since coverage involving telcos, including broadband, was a necessity for all levels of society. Now, four mobile one-stop social support centres, or PSSS, which started operating this year, will focus on providing holistic social services to residents around the Klang Valley. Women, Family and Community Development Minister Dr. Sri Rina Mamad Harun said the focus is given to Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya, as the ministry found that many cases related to psychosocial problems were reported in these areas. Speaking to reporters after launching the PSSS in Puchong, Selangor today, Dr. Sri Rina said the mobile PSSS will operate six days a week and as for now, they will focus on high-density areas. According to her, the PSSS is created to assist in addressing psychosocial issues that are spreading among the community and the services provided is face-to-face -face or online counselling, guidance services, intervention and temporary shelter. Uh, pusat sokongan sosial setempat untuk uh, kementerian pembangunan wanita, keluarga dan masyarakat ini ya, kita uh, untuk kita cadangkan adalah uh, tiga secara premis iaitu statik iaitu di negeri Kelantan, Selangor dan juga Johor dan tujuh secara mobile. Ya, dan Alhamdulillah dalam belanjawan baru-baru uh, ini juga ada penambahan untuk bajet sebanyak 4.5 juta yang akan kita gunakan juga untuk uh, menambah baik uh, pusat sokongan sosial setempat ini. Commencing further, the minister said despite operating for less than a month, PSSS had received 30 complaints related to emotional problems and stress due to the economy. She added that Yayasan Kabajikan Negara staff would manage and handle all complaints received at PSSS and channel them to other relevant agencies under the ministry. On another matter, the minister said Parti Pribumi Bersatu Malaysia, Bersatu, Sri Kandi Wing has submitted the names of six candidates to contest in the Melaka state election. Dr. Sri Rina, who is also the Sri Kandi chief, said the names of the six who are new and local faces were submitted to Perikata Nasional PN Chairman Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin for consideration. When asked about the total number of PN women candidates, she said at the moment the matter had not been decided. Previously, PN through Tan Sri Muhyiddin said the coalition will field candidates in all 28 Malacca State Assembly seats. The Malacca polls are being held following the dissolution of the Malacca State Assembly on 4th October after four assemblymen withdrew support for the leadership of Chief Minister Datu Sri Sulaiman Man Ali. The Election Commission set the 20th of November as polling day for the Malacca State election with nomination day on 8 November and early voting to be held on 16 November. In another story, the COVID-related withdrawals over the past two years have had a massive impact on the savings of employees, Provident Fund, EPF, contributors, as currently only 3% of contributors can afford their retirement. EPF Chief Strategy Officer Nor Hisham Hussein said the COVID-related withdrawals, namely ICNA, Isla Story and iChitra, resulted in many members below age 55 having critically low EPF savings. According to Nora Hisham, by the end of this year, 54% of EPF members aged 54 would have less than 50,000 ringgit in their savings account. Noting that a majority of those who withdrew their entire EPF savings upon reaching age 55 would use it up within two to three years. He also noted that the withdrawal were only allowed due to the extraordinary circumstances. However, Nora Hisham said that moving forward, 
The reopening of the economy and the measures announced in Budget 2022 should help relieve the pressure on EPF members. Commenting on the consequences should another round of withdrawal be permitted, he said those who had withdrawn from their EPF savings would now need to work an extra four to six years just to cover the amount that they withdrew over the past two years. He added that since it is unlikely that the retirement age will be raised, they would not have enough for their retirement. Thanks for staying with us in badminton. Shuttler Ng Zeyong's hard work has paid off big time as the 21-year-old showed class to win the Belgian international title in Leuven by upstaging fifth seed RJ Jairam of India 21-14, 21-14 in the men's singles final in just 33 minutes. Although his 34-year-old opponent was far more experienced, the unseated Zhe Yong was unfazed as he stayed focused throughout the game, to go one step better than his previous outing in Czech Open. In the last week's tournament, Zhe Yong had emerged as the runners-up. On the way to the finals, Ng defeated Japan's Yusuke Onodera 20-22, 21-15, 23 in the semi-finals. The 21-year-old battled for 78 minutes in the semi-finals to earn the right to play against RJ Jayaram. Elsewhere, national men's doubles shuttler Aaron Chiasso Buyix have to wait longer for their maiden world tour as the Tokyo Olympics broad medalists were ousted in the French Open semi finals early today. Despite winning the opening game 21 14, the world number eight pair went down 10 21, 22 24 against former world champions Ko Sung Hyun, Shin Baek Chul of South Korea. In another sweet story, Malaysia have qualified for the final round of the 2022 Under-23 Asian Cup football tournament after holding Thailand to a goalless draw at the Mongolian Football Federation Stadium in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia today. The draw enabled Malaysia to top Group J with seven points to send them to the finals of the tournament for the second time. Malaysia had defeated Laos on Monday and Mongolia on Thursday, both by a 1-0 margin with the goals coming from Mohamed Nur Asfa Fikri Asa. Favourites Thailand's chances of playing in the final round appear slim after finishing second in the group with five points, as only the four best group runners-up will qualify. Thailand had earlier drawn one all with Mongolia and beaten Laos 3-0. Despite playing in temperatures of 2 degrees Celsius, both teams gave an energetic display with flowing attacks. And credit should be given to the Malaysian defenders for keeping the Thai attackers at bay, which forced Warawood Srimaka to make two substitutions by the 25th minute of play. Fantastic achievement from this group of players we've said all along. You know, I have incredible belief in this group of players and uh, they performed outstandingly the whole tournament very professionally. We didn't concede one goal in the whole tournament and uh, that more or less proved the difference today. But uh, uh, across the whole board, I, I uh, cannot be prouder of this group. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it achieved uh, qualification again without losing a game. So uh, it's a fantastic achievement. Mongolia, any? Dia tidak perlu pergi ke Eropah. Setan in our top story, married couple among seven arrested in 4.2 million ringgit drug seizure. Do join us again at 12:30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Brendan Paul. Stay tuned to Solaran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening. Take care.